And welcome to this episode of Coach and Play Magazine. I'm your host, Wayne Dunn. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about uh, the recently announced college football playoff ratings and a game that has a big impact uh, on those rankings as well as the AAC as a whole. Uh, Memphis, which is currently number 13 in the rankings, is playing Navy. Uh, and this could have not only have a potential to change the structure of the rankings in terms of the power, the group of five, but also impact who's going to play in the AAC championship. So tonight we have Rich Bouch, who's one of our writers for Coach and Player Magazine, who actually wrote an article about the upcoming game. Uh, Rich, thanks again for joining us. Absolutely, Wayne. Thanks for having me. So let me ask you, my first question would be, um, with these guys playing this weekend, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things that we should look forward to in terms of this game? Well, quite a few things. Um, you know, one's just offense. Um, I mean, the key for Memphis is going to be probably tempo. Um, you know, their offense is fifth in the country, I believe, in total offense. Paxton Lynch, the, the quarterback, has thrown for 300 yards in seven straight games. Um, you know, they're an up-tempo spread team. They score 48 a game. And they're going to have to try to keep the ball away from Navy. Um, you know, as a service academy, they're one of those schools that, that runs a triple option offense. They're fourth in the country in rushing. Uh, the quarterback, mm -hmm. Keenan Reynolds, he's been starting since he was a freshman. He'll have a chance to break an NCAA record on Saturday. Um, if he scores a rushing touchdown, uh, that'll be a 78. He'll, he'll break the record that was set by Monty Ball uh, a couple years ago when he was at Wisconsin. So, I, I mean, you're going to see offense and you're going to see two contrasting styles. You know, Memphis is going to air it out and Navy's going to run it. So I, I would expect a lot of points on Saturday. Now, how does Navy end up in the Western Division of the AAC? Is it just because they were just the last team to get pulled into the conference, or pretty are, much. are they planning on moving them to the East? I, I think that was how they had to balance things out. Uh, I mean, I don't know how the AAC came up with, with how they divided divisions, but, you know, how, how Navy even ends up in the conference, maybe that's a topic for discussion, too, but – yeah, for now they're in the West, and 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 right now it's a, it's an interesting race. <laughs> Navy, Memphis, and Houston are all four and zero, oh, and you know there's a couple of games in the AAC in the last couple of weeks of the season that are going to determine not only who wins the West but who wins the the conference title game, and then you know whoever wins that could, that could have an impact on on the college football playoff. Absolutely, it, what makes it uh, looking at the upcoming games. Uh, particularly from both the East and the West, is that everybody's playing each other. And like you said, it's going to have a long-term – it's going to have an impact on the conference championship. And then really, as much as, you know, teams like Temple and Memphis are in the lead right now, you know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And we could look up at the end of November, and it would be two totally different teams uh, oh. in, in the finals. Yeah, I mean, Temple, Temple's kind of in the driver's seat in the East. Um, but, you know, they do have to play Memphis yet. Memphis, you know, unbeaten 15-game right. winning streak, but they still, I mean, you know, they can't look past Navy this weekend, and then they still have to play Houston and Temple. So, you know, it's crazy, but, you know, you, you could see something totally different than what we're thinking right now, you know. Um, who knows? I mean, Houston plays uh, Cincinnati this weekend. They can't look past them. Obviously, Memphis right. can't look past Navy. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be very interesting the last couple weeks of the season in the AAC. And, and it seems like one of the great things about the AAC is it seems like from looking at the group of five, you know, AAC is really having a major impact in the national standings. I mean, with three teams – in the top 25, uh, we just went through, and I'm in Philly, and we just went through a week of mayhem uh, prepping for the Notre Dame game. And, yeah. you know, that game was pretty much all the way up to the bitter end, you oh, know, yeah. Uh, yeah. before it decided. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we had uh, at the Temple game, the commissioner of the AAC was there, and he had mentioned how, you know, with the teams that we're, that we're beating, the teams that we're playing, and just the impact our conference have right now, we, I mean, who's to say in a few years that we're not added into the mix in terms of, you know, it could be a power six is as opposed to a power five right now. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it could happen. You can't, you can't say never, but uh, I mean, the, the, the situation that I would love to see is uh, you know, and, and I know you, you're a temple guy, but you know, if Memphis, <laughs> Memphis wins out, you know, they went out, they win the AAC title game. And then think about how that looks you know, an unbeaten Memphis team that has a win over Mississippi, then imagine if Mississippi comes along and wins the SEC title, because that could happen too. You know, so you'd have a, a, a group of five team with a win over the SEC champion and they're unbeaten. You know, they're going to they're gonna put them in the college football playoff. It's an interesting thought. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the good thing about what's going on with AAC is that you know, this is helping recruiting for all of these schools. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, because we're competing with the big boys and, and you know, we're in the mix in these kind mm-hmm. of discussions. Now, let, <clears throat> But one of the things that happens in college football, and I'm going to get your thoughts on this, is that when coaches like uh, Fuentes down in Memphis and Coach Rule uh, at Temple and then the coach at Houston, in these kind of situations, it seems like that's where the bigger schools or uh, the bigger programs start trying to poach our coaches. Do right. you see any potential of any of these coaches leaving? Well, you know, I don't know if they, <clears throat> you know, who knows if if they're looking, you know. I mean, obviously they're going to say they're not, but, you know, Fuente's name has come up at Virginia Tech already. Um you know, he's a guy right. from the area, you know, he recruits that area, you know, he'd be a great fit. He'd be a little bit different because he's more of an offensive guy, you know, and Virginia Tech's kind of that, you know, more of a defensive minded program under Beamer, but, but still who, who knows? Um, you know, I, I've actually heard uh, uh, Tom Herman's name uh, come up a few times. Uh, I, I believe at Miami was one. Um, wow. And, and even uh, Coach Rule at Temple, you know, his name uh, came up at, at Virginia Tech as well. So, yeah, I, oh. their potential to poach these guys, absolutely. You know, will they leave? I don't know. But, you know, uh, when you have the potential to make, you know, an extra million, two, five, whatever, I, you know, it's going to be tough to keep them from, from jumping to a bigger school. Oh, please don't let Coach Rule leave, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I personally, I'd love to see a guy like like Fuente and a guy like like Matt Rule. I'd love to see him stay, just stay and build yeah. a program and build something special. You know, absolutely. But it's hard to uh, hard to battle against money. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But you know, hopefully, I don't know. I'm still hoping the coach will stay. Uh, he's kind of – he alluded that, you know, he's here to stay. He don't – he can't make any promises, but, you know, he loves it here. His family's here. And, I mean, he's, he's, he's the toast of the town now. I mean, mm-hmm. so I, it would be – it would be a hard sell. They would have – somebody would have to come out of their pocket real heavy him. And, but yeah. then one of the risks um, to all three of these coaches um, is just – you look at what happened to Al Golden. I mean – same kind of yeah. situation. He got yeah. Temple to a good point, and then he went to a program who's already, you know, his reputation, you know, expectations is much high. And then if you don't, even if you're having a somewhat good season, mm-hmm. I mean, it's to you. I mean, they, they expect yeah. to win national yeah. titles every year, and the next thing you know, you know, you're out of a job. So that's, that's one of the risks yeah. as well when you look at these programs. Absolutely. Is what's next for the AAC? Do you see a thing? 
Um, do you see them other other teams moving to other conferences? Like, will this conference be intact? Well, if I if I heard you correctly, um, you know what what's the future of the AAC? Uh, you know, if in the very immediate future, I you know I think the league stays together. Um, you know, we may be headed for a day when there are you know four power conferences. Maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't foresee that in the very near future. Um, I think the AAC sticks together now and, and stays the way it is for for a year or two uh, you know there's a, a couple of programs i believe that uh, are in the fcs that are you know looking to move up but you know who knows where, where they're going to end up i know one of the teams is coastal carolina so that'll probably be a team that's going to end up in the sun belt um but for now i you know, i think the ac stays where it's at uh, it's a good league and and i enjoy watching it absolutely Absolutely. Well, once again, I want to thank you again, Rich, for, for joining us tonight on the Coach and Player Podcast. And for those who are listening, if you want to subscribe to our podcast, you can find us on SoundCloud. Uh, you can also download this podcast from Coach and Player Magazine, which you can also be a subscriber uh, to our magazine as well. So, Rich, thanks again for joining us tonight. Absolutely. Thanks, Wayne. Appreciate it. Uh, anytime. Thank you. Take care, man. All right. You too. Bye now.